Lord Saul, when Saul got in trouble after he uh, disobeyed God, and the Lord said, I'm going to remove you from being king. It says in Samuel that there was a spirit from, an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And in 1 Samuel 16, it talks about that. They said, we need to get somebody who can minister to him. So David went, they called David and he would sing and, and minister to the Lord with, with Saul and that spirit that was troubling him would depart and, and he'd have calm and deliverance. So there are some beautiful things that happen as we worship. If you will open your heart to begin to sing what the Holy Spirit is singing. I can tell you that years ago, we would be worshiping and the, uh, I would hear the sound of the instruments and it was literally, I don't know how to describe it, it was literally as if words were jumping off the, the string or the keyboard. I don't know how else I can ex describe it to you, but that is the song of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to hear that, you can sing it. And it's the, it's the word of prophecy. And you don't have to be a great singer. You know what? Being, being trained gives you more confidence to sing what you hear or to play what you hear. It doesn't mean that you're any better or any Matter of fact, trained musicians honestly have a much more temptation, don't yes. they, don't we, Kevin? Yes. To get and to get into pride and arrogance, and yeah. it stops being God and starts being about us. Well, did you see what I I was doing that? And did you see the audience? Did you see what happened? But you know what? You we just have to have enough skill to be able to copy what we hear in the spirit. I remember years ago, Brother Warren, Kevin's brother was at a conference with, uh, do you remember who that was with, honey? Kent Henry? I think it was Kent Henry. Yeah, Kent Henry. Was it Kent Henry? I think so. He came back and he told us, you know what? He was worshiping the Lord and he was leading the congregation. He started to sing a song, but because the musicians weren't skilled enough to follow what he was doing, then he wasn't able to take it further. So his point to us was, is that you need to be as skillful as possible so you can get in tune with what the Lord is doing, hear his song and play along with it. You don't have to be professional. And he came back, he heard that song and he, he, he put it to music at home. And we started singing it in church. Do you remember that? The song. No, what song you sing? What is the song? I can't remember, but it came out of that meeting. It came out of that meeting. Yeah. Wow. Probably when I leave here tonight, I'll remember it. Because he had the skill to to hear it and say, "This is what I heard. Let me let me go and write it down, or or, or see what the Lord says." But you don't have to be a skilled musician or singer to to hear the sound of the spirit of the lord singing you just have to open your mouth just like you do when you speak in tongues just as you do when you prophesy and begin to allow the lord the spirit of the lord to sing through you how can you say that why don't you turn over to the book of zephaniah chapter three zephaniah chapter three i'm going to try to go back here because i don't want to keep guys all night this is a big subject, and we could talk about it a long time. Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Verse, verse 16 and 17. Actually, let's read verse 17. The Lord God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Do you know that the Spirit of the Lord sings over you? Amen. It says in the book of Song, the book of Sol Song of Solomon, that he's singing over his beloved. He's singing to his bride. The Lord is singing a love song to us. 
And if we listen, when we are in, in times of when we're in his presence, you might hear what he's singing, and then you can sing it out and bless the body of Christ with the, what the Lord is singing. Because he is singing over you. He's serenading you. Can I put it that bluntly? The bridegroom that wants to serenade his bride, and if we can listen and be in tune with what he is singing, we can join in the song and begin to bring it out to where everyone can hear it. Isn't that awesome? What a wonderful God we serve. He loves us so much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just love that. The song of the Lord. The amazing thing is that, you know, there are songs that are inspired. Maybe they're praise songs. Prophetic songs are almost always instructional. Hmm. If we go over to the uh, book of 2 Kings chapter 3. That's a good word. 2 Kings chapter 3. We see that um, Israel was in, a, was in a tough spot. They were being surrounded on all sides by Moab, by their enemies. And it, if we go down to chapter 3 and verse 15, somebody said, you know, Jehoshaphat said, we need a word from the Lord. Is there any prophet around here? And somebody said, you know what? There's that guy, Elisha, who was, poured, who was the servant of Elijah. So Jehoshaphat said, go get him. It says in verse 15, this is Elisha talking, he says, because he was, he said in verse 14, we'll start. He said to the uh, king of Israel, because he was an ungodly king, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the present of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not even look toward thee or see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Now this is a beautiful thing. If you look up that word minstrel in Hebrew, the word is meyav, me and it literally means a singer who sings to a string, a stringed instrument. You know the piano is a stringed instrument? Amen. It's not one that you can necessarily pick up and carry around. Although Jane thinks that Joe would have carried my piano for years if, if, he, if I hadn't had a guitar inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he carried it I don't know, it was pretty heavy. Yeah. But mom got it up the hill. It was getting it up that hill, I know. <laughs> Now everybody knows what a sweetheart you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but a piano is a stringed instrument. If you ever look inside an acoustic piano, you will see a harp that is strings. And it, you don't pluck the strings with your hand, but there are little hammers inside that piano. When you push the key, the hammer hits the string. And this word minstrel, literally means a strum or a, in the mo, in the widest sense a singer singing to a stringed instrument so it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the lord came upon came upon him who came upon elisha and he said thus saith the lord make this valley full of ditches i believe he sang it For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. You have to remember, if you go back, that this was a time of drought. So what happened? If we go further on in this chapter, 
came to pass in verse 20 in the morning when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. So all of those ditches were filled with water. And when the Moabites heard that the kings would come up to fight with them, they gathered, gathered all that were, they were, that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Thou, now therefore, Moab to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites even back to their country. So the word of the Lord came when that song, that song of the Lord began to be played. The word of the Lord came through Elisha. He said, make the valley full of ditches. The Lord is going to fill it. Probably not nearly as <laughs> poorly as that, but we don't know. And he began to sing that song of prophecy and said, dig ditches. Nothing says, nothing says, come on guys, get your shovels and dig some ditches like the old prophet singing to you. But they did it and the Lord turned their whole situation around. So the song of the Lord, that prophetic song will bring you deliverance. It will bring deliverance. It'll bring healing. It'll touch your life. Amen. Amen.